Look at the Virginia Tech 5-3-2 starting lineup tonight, Cedric. Yep, with this 5-3-2, they want to get their middies involved early and often. It's a very defensive formation. They're going to try to stop these Blue Devils, especially on the quick counter. Look, especially Ben Fisher making his first start in the midfield. Let's see if he can get the Cokies going. Tough night to be making your first career start there as the six if you're Ben Fisher against a really talented Duke club. It is. That's quite the challenge, but that's what the ACC is all about, right? Absolutely. Hokies really think this 5-3-2 formation could work despite some of the personnel changes that they've had in recent weeks, trying to search for a little bit of consistency. Now for the Duke Blue Devils running that 3-5-2. It's the usual cast of characters for John Kerr's team. Very consistent lineup, very consistent formation. This team has played for quite some time. It matches up well, you know, with, with Virginia Tech will be a little more defensive oriented. We'll see Duke. We know how they play. They will find these mids. They will get expansive. They will try to lump the ball into the big boys in the box and score goals. As we mentioned, senior night for Duke. The Blue Devils honoring 11 seniors before the match this evening. You obviously played in a match like that. What are the emotions like for these guys, knowing there's more soccer ahead of them, but knowing this is the final time in the regular season they're going to play here? Well, you know, we had a great pregame meal with Coach Kerr, and we were talking to the boys, and I, I think it is having awareness of the moment. You know, this this – most likely will not be their last game in Koski, sure. but they're approaching it this way. It's the last regular season game. It's the last guaranteed opportunity to play in this stadium. And I, and I think they're all aware. You know, this is a special class that has gone through a lot and they've stayed together and they've really lifted this program to, 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 to great heights in the last couple of years. So I think they're all going to appreciate playing together, you know, one last time together in a regular season ACC match. Well, let's talk about tonight from a Virginia Tech standpoint. You know, the Hokies coming off a night on Tuesday that they'd probably like to forget. It was one of those nights where it was started off great against a Radford team that, frankly, Virginia Tech feels like they were better than. Hokies got out to a 2 nothing lead, then gave up three quick goals, never recovered, and it's been a much different feeling around that Virginia Tech club the last couple of days. Well, it has, and, and watching them warm up, I saw intensity. You know, I, I saw a very intentional purposefulness about this group. Uh, they have a lot to prove tonight. This is a very talented team. You know, they're, they're any given night. They've won big games, including this season, beating Louisville in September, for instance. On they, the road, too. On the road. So they know they can play with anyone. Uh, but they have a lot to prove. You know, as you mentioned, you know, going down, being up 2-0 and, and losing that game in that fashion. And four times this season, they've given up three goals within a 13-minute span. So really, I think it's, it is, if, if they go down, it is coming together and responding. And the mindset really changed after that loss, too. It felt like all we've probably got to do, maybe get to the semifinals of the conference tournament, maybe play well, have a chance to get into the NCAA. And now after that loss Tuesday, probably a team that's got to go out and win the ACC tournament. If they can find a way to win tonight, get into that top five, top six, makes that task a little easier. Well, there's a certain thing about transparency and knowing where you stand. Mm -hmm. And I think they all know that most likely they'll have to win out to make another NCAA tournament experience. So, um, you know, this, that's the challenge for them. Ajago had a touch at it for the Blue Devils. Now Kenny Hot. Ruben Masalas now for the Blue Devils. Chipped in. Ajago. Oh, nobody home there. And Virginia Tech just trying to clear. Certainly has been the possession on this end of the pitch for the Blue Devils so far in the first three minutes of this match. Well, this Duke team wants to keep possession as high up the pitch as possible. You know, this is a very powerful attack. They've got, we mentioned the two big boys up top that do nothing but create offensive opportunities. And there's no disguise in how they want to play. You know, they're, they're going to get in the attack as quickly as possible, keep possession as high up the field and get numbers up. We just saw Tina Lopez make a run from center back and drop that ball in. Tina Lopez, who's been playing phenomenal for Duke, had a really great match on the road at Pitt a couple of weeks ago. Good ball here. Masala's trying to track it down in a good defensive play there by Virginia Tech. It was Howard, the sophomore, making the play for the Hokies. Well, you mentioned Tino Lopez. It's all come together from this year. He's been a great leader, uh, very talented player. You mentioned a lot of soccer to head. I believe Tino Lopez not only has soccer left this year, but at the professional level. Playing his best soccer at the best time of year, too. We mentioned the great game he played at Pittsburgh. John Kerr, his head coach, very complimentary of the work that he did. Also had the game-winning goal a couple of weeks ago here against NC State. Too much weight on that one and a goal kick coming for Virginia Tech. There's the head coach of the Hokies, Mike Brizendine, in his 15th year at Virginia Tech. Really has built a very nice program in Blacksburg. Certainly a team that's taken its lumps this year. Not always fair. A team that's probably a little better than maybe their results would indicate. 
Coach Brez is one of the true gents of the game. You know, have so much respect for him. I've always enjoyed our calls and, and getting to know him a little bit and just how, how, how he approaches his team. You know, the, the man he is in terms of character, how he leads them. He embraces the challenge of not only being a soccer coach, but being a leader and, and teaching these young men how to be leaders, not only in soccer, but in life. And yes, they may not have the results that their, their roster would indicate they should have, but there's a lot of lessons to be learned in every experience, and he does a good job of reinforcing that. Foul there on Duke will give Virginia Tech the free kick opportunity. I thought it was interesting, you were talking earlier today before the match about how Coach Brizantine, you feel like it, it really is a player's coach. Absolutely, it, it resonates. Uh, I noticed it a couple of games last year. You, you watch how a coach responds to guys getting injured. And usually you see the support staff and, and, and training staff running out, but I've noticed him going out to check on his players several, on several occasions. And not that he's the only coach that does that, but it, it says something, you know, by the relationship he has, and, and, and that's important. So he's definitely a player's coach in every aspect. Perhaps a little missed opportunity there, ball into the box. Virginia Tech hoping for a foul, but Julian Eystone will play it quickly for Duke and see how quick Duke wants to get up the pitch there, just trying to get it going offensively. Meanwhile, Virginia Tech feels like the key for the Hokies tonight is to try to find a way to get out to an early lead and let that great defense kind of be the stalwart that it's been at times this year for the Hokie club. Well, they've got to, they've got to get a lead, yes, but they have to slow down this Duke attack. And and you're right, man. Ruben Marsalis did not mess around <laughs> trying to get that ball in play. And we see the same thing from Ajago. And there, there's a certain intentionalness. These Blue Devils are preparing for the postseason. You know, there's goal differential and a lot of different equations on the line tonight with ACC standings and they want to control their own destiny. And they can do that by scoring as many goals as possible. I think it's interesting. We probably should dive a little deeper into the anatomy of tonight. Obviously, Duke could finish as high as fourth place. There's a scenario where if Virginia Tech wins and it all goes apart for the Blue Devils. They could slide to number 10 in the ACC. Virginia Tech with a win could get as high as six. I mean, a lot of things still in play. Duke certainly needs a win tonight to help accomplish finishing fourth, but probably need a little bit of help. Would need a loss from Virginia tonight as well. And Syracuse, if they wanted to help the Blue Devils out, Duke probably rooting for Syracuse not to get a result this evening as well. Well, there, there's very few conferences in America where the number 18 in the country is still fighting for a pole position in their conference. And that just speaks to the strength of the ACC overall. There's no easy night. Every team can win any given night. A good header on there, good flick, but a nice play by Timmy Adams. No doubt this is the deepest and toughest conference in America. Eyestone comes out and will usher that one aside. And it's only going to get deeper next year. Yes, it is. The additions of those three heavyweights into the ACC. And, man, no rest for the weary. You could make a case that you're going to get matchups in the ACC tournament that begin next week. They're the caliber of Elite Eight Final Four type matchups. Well, almost regular season games. <laughs> I mean, the, the intensity and, 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 and so much is on the line with each game in terms of standings. And you're right, the, the ACC season, regular season, essentially preparing for the NCAA tournament. Pretty good uh, litmus test to, get, to go through the gauntlet of the ACC to be battle tested for the postseason. I think to your point also says something when the number eight team in the country could be the number four team in the, in the conference standings. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I mean, think about that for a second. The number eight team nationally could only be four, five, six in their league tournament. It's unbelievable. I think that is the best analytic you can utilize to sum up the, the strength and depth of the ACC. Sometimes we don't need the numbers. It's just <laughs> what it says on paper. Sometimes it writes itself, Chris. It, it does. It does. What's your takeaway from the first almost nine minutes of this match so far? Well, it's, it's been somewhat balanced in that we don't we don't have any score line. I don't think either team has really seized control of the game yet. Uh, Duke needs to do a better job of, of not being one and done, as we see a lot of through balls that haven't found feet do a better job of holding possession. Uh, Virginia Tech ha has been good in possession when they've held it. You know, that's what they want to do. They want to slow the game down, find feet, and try to spread this Blue Devil team out to find the spaces in between the lines. Howard not very happy that he was not awarded a throw in there. He was not happy with that. <laughs> Stated this case, but to no avail. And back to the Hokies there. Howard will get a chance to toss it in now for Virginia Tech. Only player to play every minute of the season for Virginia Tech, Grant Howard, the sophomore from Mableton, Georgia. 
And this is a Virginia Tech team, certainly has some upperclassmen, but a lot of their offensive success has come from some of their younger guys this year, and that's certainly a positive sign moving forward for this Hokie program. There's a lot of guys getting quality experience that are first or second year players are gonna be major contributors for this team in the future. And sometimes you have to take your lumps in that building process. Another great opportunity here for the Blue Devils goes by the wayside. It'll be a goal kick coming. And 12 of their 19 goals for Virginia Tech this year have been scored by underclassmen. And a team that has certainly been better offensively than they were a year ago. Virginia Tech only scoring in six of their 12 matches. Last year, Alex Stone comes out. He's interfered with a bit, but we play on. And a injured Virginia Tech player as well, and certainly hope that it is nothing too serious. That's Howard, who's been one of their leaders. Yeah, I hope he's okay. I, yeah. don't, I don't like the way he fell and the, the way he immediately threw his hand up. And, and right on cue, we see, we see Coach Brez coming out to check on him. And looks like it is a, a lower body injury for Howard. A bit of a collision there with Eyestone, who came out to play it, an aggressive play by Eyestone to come off his line to, to get to that one. Well, 50-50 ball. Yeah. Both players went in, and, and unfortunately, sometimes. And certainly hope that it's nothing severe. I think maybe the best case is perhaps they just knock knees or and, and but don't want to speculate. Certainly the training staff out there to take a look. And as you mentioned a moment ago, Coach Briz out there immediately to check on his sophomore out of Georgia, one of the leaders on this Virginia Tech team, as we mentioned, having played every minute this season for the Hokies. Well, without hesitation, Coach Briz didn't wait. He was on his way out there and just, again, speaks to the man he is and level of compassion and care he has for his players. We talked a, talked a moment ago about some of the, the implications tonight as they still tend to Howard. But you see here Syracuse out to the one nothing lead over Boston College. That came in the first half, obviously from a Duke perspective, hoping that Syracuse does not get a result tonight. But it's just going to be interesting as we follow the scores and, and all the moving and shaking around the ACC tonight to see which teams get the buys, which teams are hosting, uh, beginning on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday here next week for the ACC tournament. Well, and it's also interesting, you know, everyone's essentially playing at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to have visibility on what your opponents are doing, which, which you know, can hone in your focus. Let's just focus on what we do, play our game, let everything else sort out. But a lot of pieces still to fall. And for Duke, the only thing they can control is what they can control, and that's winning here tonight. These two teams have matched up quite a lot recently. 25th meeting, Duke has dominated the series as of late. 16 and 4, the Blue Devils overall, 7 to 2 and 1 record for Duke over the last 10 meetings. And the last two games have been pretty competitive. Virginia Tech last one in 2019, but the last couple of meetings between these teams have been 1 0 finals. I mean, it's been some really competitive soccer that Duke and Virginia Tech have played. Well, extremely competitive. I mean, this Hokie team can play, and they step up for big games, and, and there's most certainly an awareness. Uh, this Blue Devil team is not taking their opponent lightly at all. Uh, you mentioned being being prepared for the moment and, and, and that next man up mentality and, and and controlling their own destiny. And that was one thing that Coach Kerr really uh, focused on in pregame is control we can control. And and largely, you mentioned the record over the last yeah. two years when scoring first. Let's score. You know, let's get ahead and, and, and let's push the envelope. Yeah, this is a, a Duke team that's been phenomenal at scoring first. 7-0-1 when scoring first. And they've scored first in 13 of their 15 regular season games this year. As they attend to they continue to attend to Grant Howard, who's down, we're we're going to step aside and back to Kaskin Stadium with more in just a moment. Nothing, nothing here in the first half on ACC Network Extra.
back at Coskinen Stadium in Durham, Duke and Virginia Tech tonight. You see we're in the first half, still very early in the first half. Chris Edwards, Cedric Burke, the rest of our great team, and certainly the concern now not so much on the pitch in terms of the game action, but really it, the, all the focus is on Grant Howard, the sophomore from Georgia, who is down and being attended to. I believe it is something that's a lower body injury, but certainly the concern of all the Hokie fans and the players with Howard, and we certainly hope that he is going to be okay as they tend to him. And this is this is tough, Cedric. You know, obviously this is part of sport, right? And you know that this is a possibility you might get injured. But tough for a team that really needs a victory tonight to see one of their leaders go down to this early in the game. Well, it's extremely hard, and all the focus goes on hoping that young man's okay and, and, and this isn't too serious. But, you know, this is one of those moments in sports where you realize some things are bigger than the game. And you can see both of these teams respectfully – gave him his space and uh, it's just unfortunate you know it's a part of the game but unfortunate so just hope he's okay turning this to to looking at the game now on the field once we get back to action what does this delay if anything do for these two teams who it kind of got going a little bit we, we worked up a nice little back and forth a good run of play and now you, you see that the game stop well i think both teams have to mentally reset and click back on there's still a game to be played you know, have to have respect for this situation and in Duke's case your opponent and hope he's okay but um, you know th th sometimes it's hard in these moments because we're all human and, and we you know as a player you can all we can all see ourselves in that situation uh, but there's a game to be played and so part of this is refocusing and, and honing on the task at hand and the Virginia Tech staff looking on there and certainly a positive to see Howard being Loaded onto the stretcher there, he does seem to be able to, to talk and communicate and move, which are all positive things. And hopefully it's nothing too serious. And he's back quickly. And there goes Howard, the nice wave. You love to see that too, acknowledging that, that he's okay, but certainly appears to be a lower body injury. Now this Hokie team, Cedric, has to really rally and figure out what their next moves are without one of their leaders who has been the guy that has played every minute for Virginia Tech this year. Let's take one look just to see if we can pick up anything on this injury with Howard. 14 here in the maroon jersey. Doesn't seem to be there was anything with the contact. You can see him immediately grabbing his left knee and then calling for help. Yeah, he knew immediately. Yeah. So, yeah, just just hope he's okay. And, and you know, we, we talk about he's, he's a leader on this team and has led them in many ways. And... In some ways, it can not only refocus you, but give you a new, newfound purpose. You know, this is al already a tough game, but now you have to play for your teammate. And we'll see who steps up for Virginia Tech. I mean, that's a big void when you've got someone from a coaching staff perspective, too. You, you know you can count on Howard to be out there for the full 90 on a night-in, night-out basis. And now maybe one of those underclassmen that we talked about, a chance to step up. Well, the ACC is the next man up league. And, you know, from unfortunate circumstances it opens up a, a window of opportunity for another player so yes for, as from a coaching staff perspective that's exactly what you want to see you want to see someone step up and and and, and essentially let's go out and do it for our teammate and galvanize duke really pressuring here trying to create that turnover and they're attacking third and i think these blue devils are going to have a thing or two to say about that yes. they're not giving virginia tech any space to build out of the back in fact it looks like they've increased that line of, of intensity and confrontation a little bit higher in the press right now surprised they've increased that line so early in this first half uh, not at all i'm sure that was exactly what was discussed on the sideline is we, we need to go take this game and uh, let's let our defensive effort and intensity create offensive opportunities and that's really what this blue devil team has done all year I stone and there to spear that one as good as I stone has been this year and he has been phenomenal for Duke the rookie out of Dallas Texas 34 saves click six clean sheets over his first 14 matches I think a lot of people forget that he's only 17 years old and, and should still be in high school right now to to yes to be that age and to one earn the respect of your teammates um, and, and such a senior laden team that is an accomplishment of in itself but they have full confidence and he has been incredible and really that defensive effort we mentioned tino lopez earlier but it starts in the back of the goal and it goes through the spine of this team frederick couldn't keep it in there for duke and not to mention you know he, he had some pretty tough shoes to fill he did with, uh, mr elliot hamill who had such a great career 
but has really stepped in, reclassified to, to enroll at Duke early. And it, it has felt, watching this team this year, like they really haven't missed a whole lot of a, a beat there in goal because that's how consistent Julian Eyestone has been for Duke. And now Mr. Consistency, Forrester Ajago trying to put Duke on the board first, but Timmy Adams with a great save. Hey, that was a great ball in by Ken Kenny Hott, and Forrester took it down, and that was a great save. The 29th save of the year for the junior out of Atlanta, who was brilliant here for Virginia Tech. Great ball over the top, great collection on that ball from Forster Jago. A great effort from the goalkeeper. There's uh, been 12 of those that have not been denied this season. And now Ruben Masalas will have the service on the being set piece for Duke tonight. Timmy, by the way, Timmy Adams, the goalkeeper for Virginia Tech, listed at six feet, seven inches tall. Service in. And headed out, the Blue Devils will get another crack at it. You've got Timmy Adams at 6'7", and you've got Julian Eyestone at 6'6", maybe the tallest goalkeeper matchup in the country tonight. It would not behoove you to try to chip either one of them. Would not. You need to find a corner and glow. Another good swing in. Settling it is hot, and lost it. Going to play it back to Eyestone to reset. I'm sure the uh, Hokie basketball staff wouldn't mind having Timmy Adams come out and try to post up a, a couple guys during the season. Maybe a dual sport opportunity <laughs> in the future. You can't teach 6-7. No. Or the things you can't teach, height and speed, right? Yep. Ajago. And what's that one go? So dangerous anytime Ajago is anywhere in the vicinity of one of those balls. Oh, and, he, and we've seen him create them in different ways, whether you know, fulfilling the, the assist of a teammate, but he's created a few on his own just through effort. Ball in, and Usher aside for a moment by Duke. Virginia Tech trying to build a little bit of a rally. That one flicked toward the top of the box, and then Eyestone will play it easily. We mentioned the busy night around the ACC, Notre Dame and Pittsburgh, and a top 20 clash tonight. It's the Irish up a goal in the first half. And that is a matchup right there. Yes, it is. Those are two very tough teams, but I mean, they're, they're all tough at this point of the season, but interested to see the results of this evening. But think about that matchup, two top 20 teams playing in the regular season finale. Here's a chance for Virginia Tech, and there's a foul on Roche right outside the box. The rookie goes down, and a card has been assessed to Duke. I'm gonna go, go on Tino Lopez. Yeah, Tina just a little bit late on that one. And we see this ball just a Tino just mistimed it by a little bit. I don't think there's anything malicious or yeah. purposeful about it, but certainly worthy of a card. No, not malicious. A, a, an aggressive soccer sure. play. Yeah. Um, and and if if that's gonna happen, you want it to be outside of the box. And really, uh, Tina was last man back, so baller man mentality. Now a chance for Virginia Tech to strike here. We'll see if they can get one to Eyestone. Hokies have yet to attempt a shot tonight. Fenner Diaz faked it. The wall blocks it. And then the Blue Devils chip it out. But just to circle back for a moment, Pittsburgh and Notre Dame, top 20 matchup in the regular season finale. That's a second or third weekend NCAA matchup. Easily, if not if not Final Four matchup. Really good play there by Wayne Frederick for Duke as well. That's a good job in the wall. You know, Jumping in the wall is always a risky move. That's why you sometimes see a player laying behind them, uh, but very well timed. I think with the hesitation and the uh, attempted Deceptiveness on that, that setup, it gave the Blue Devils a little more time to get in position. This way for Ruben Masalas, and then right back to the back line for the Blue Devils, trying to build it up. Good job by the Blue Devils, showing a little bit more patience on the build in the back. We saw it drew out two Virginia Tech players to attempt to press, and they were disjointed in the midfield and um, didn't make the connection there, but but that's 
really how they can break them down. Would, so you would like to see this Duke team maybe try to exert a little bit more patience moving forward? Uh, a little more possession. You know, everything has been that. Now, the style of this team is get it up as quickly as possible, but um, it's, it's frankly, they're not holding possession right now. You know, so we can see a concerted effort, and we've seen you know, Coach Kerr really do this a couple times this season and slow them down a little bit. Let's just keep possession, draw, draw our opponent out, and then we go. And really that comes from quick switches of the ball. You know, switch the point of attack as quickly as possible. Try to, you know, find space behind an overload of the defenders and attack that way. Offside flag is up there on Virginia Tech. Much to the chagrin of Oliver Roche. Roche, the rookies had a nice year for Virginia Tech. Four goals, including a couple of game winners. His four goals the most by a Hokie rookie since 2019. That is not an easy feat to accomplish in this league. No, it is not. And again, we, we talked about the future is bright for this team. Ajago, nice move. Oh, right back to Frederick. And the handball there. It'll go back to Virginia Tech. Kind of sh shot that at him. I don't think yeah. he had much of a choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was he supposed to do? Yeah. Feathered ahead, and I stone there to pick it up and quickly put it back in play. Amir Daly, who has really turned his game on this year. Coach Kerr in our chat earlier today, I, I came away after he was talking about Mani Amir, really impressed by the job that he has done. Coach Kerr is saying he looks like a pro now. Amir's such a versatile player. I mean, he's really progressed over his career. He's played both as a an outside mid, an outside back, an interior back at times, and, and he can do the job in any position, but um, specifically him getting up in that wing, he's such a dynamic player. There's really been a focus this year on quality touches, especially in the offensive third and, and finishing opportunities, but he, Amir Daly definitely has pro potential. Uh, yellow card here, charge to the Blue Devils, and that'll be our goal for Bjornsson. Uh, that would be a professional foul. Yes, it would. The Blue Devils do have to be mindful yes. and watch this, these yellow cards accumulating. It's their second of the first half. Duke overall with 36 yellow cards now on the season. And that was, I think, every coach, right? This time of the year, you are a little more mindful of the yellow card status for all of your players. Well, you, know, you never want to let up. You want to play hard. But important, especially as we approach postseason, you have to have 11 guys on the field. You know, don't, don't beat yourself and give your opponent an advantage. Do you feel like the, the, that was more of an aggressive play? Obviously, the, the yellow card against Lopez was, was just a hard play. Do you, are you concerned at all about the physicality? No, I mean, these, these are smart guys, and they know, they know how to police themselves and, and adjust accordingly. It just means you, you, you can't quite be as reckless maybe in the next tackle and have to make sure you time it correctly. Good turnover there created by Duke. Haven't caught much of Periano's name tonight. And Periano almost won the corner there for Duke. Which is a rarity. Yeah. Yes. And Periano has been such an important piece for several years for this Blue Devil team. And once he gets going, he's an engine. Don't know that you could call him the unsung hero of this team, but he's certainly one of those guys that does the, the, the dirty work, for lack of a better term, for this Duke team. He does, and, and some games it's, it's more apparent than others. Mm -hmm. You know, he's had a, a, a few games this season specifically where he's really stepped up, but usually you're right. He's the guy that may not leap off the page, but he's doing all the little things behind the scenes. He's doing the work in the midfield. He can be box to box if necessary. He's always looking for an outlet, to be an outlet rather for a teammate. Does a great job really being an engine for this team and creating the energy. 11. 11. Now Duke with the opportunity. It'll be Masalis with the ball in. And that one gets through and gets in. one nothing Duke. That was a sneaky finish. Seemed to catch the Virginia Tech back line off guard. How about that? Maybe not the way they drew it up, but the Blue Devils will take it. Hey, ball in the back of the net, ball in the back of the net, right, Chris? <laughs> Duke scoring first for the 14th time this year. We see this ball come over, bounce out, and yeah, just kind of sneaky touch. Marsalis gets on it. Oh, 
Uh, I think it actually looks like an own goal. It does. Yep, yep. And they had initially credited Frederick with the goal for Duke, but that certainly does appear to be an own goal there. I do not believe it touched another blue double. So j just mis mistiming the clearance there. Ends up in the back of the net. That's not the start you want from a Hokie perspective. So with 25 minutes to go in the first half, it's Duke leading 1-0. And now the Blue Devils can really try to, try to push the pace here, looking for that second goal. And kind of a d disastrous last couple of minutes for Virginia Tech. Yeah, just things haven't gone well recently. So, you know, from Blue Devil perspective, we talked about how dangerous they are in the stats when they score first. We also talked about, you know, Virginia Tech has a tendency to concede goals in yes. bunches. And uh, both teams know that. So we can see immediately this Duke team is going to apply more pressure, uh, raise this line of confrontation even higher, and try to press them to get another one. That's a Virginia Tech team that is accustomed to, to playing from behind. Virginia Tech has only had a lead at halftime one time this year. And that was at Pittsburgh on October the 6th. But now you see Periano. Well, nifty little move there with Masalas. And we do see, again, a conscious effort. Let's draw him out. Let's open up space. Tina Lopez wily, wisely goes back to Eyestone. Right now, Connor Pugh's pressing by himself. You can't press without a teammate. It, it significantly opened up space in the midfield. Look at this blast, and it's chipped wide. It was Bjornsson coming off the hat trick on Tuesday night, but he wins the corner kick for the Blue Devils. Virginia Tech has to be very careful of how they're pressing these Blue Devils. They have to stay compact and together as a unit. And when they lose it, especially in this 5-3-2 lineup, they have to condense and come together. There's just too much space in the midfield right now. You mentioned Pew pressing there. Now, maybe not the case with Pew, but Virginia Tech does have several guys playing maybe a little bit out of position, almost by necessity, over the last couple of weeks. They do. Several, several middies who were, who were playing on the back line tonight. And trying to make the run at it for the header was a Jago. Couldn't get there, but the possession will stay on this end for Duke. And, that, and that's tough, too. A lot of these guys probably recruited you know, in, in different positions and, and now being forced to, to learn a new position really on the fly. That's not easy to do midseason. Not in this league either. Yeah, and a lot of these are versatile players in this day and age. You know, you, you really train to be able to play multiple pos positions, but at this level, you can get exposed. Like what you've seen from the Blue Devils over all the last couple of minutes. Obviously, the goal they, they got through, but just the way they have attacked this Virginia Tech defense. Yeah, I think last five to ten minutes, they're, they're, they've they've looked better, more cohesive in terms of playing together and keeping possession. Uh, off the ball movement has been better, specifically third man running, where they're opening up opportunities for each other. Similar spot to where Duke got the goal a few moments ago. See if Masalas has a similar idea. Ball in. Frederick is there. Punched away by Adams. Ruben Marsalis again with a phenomenal ball to that far post. And Wayne Frederick just missed getting that one on target. And the goal kick coming here for Virginia Tech. Take another glance at this great ball in by Ruben Marsalis. And these lefty in swingers, Marsalis plays are hard, especially they can get stuck up in the lights pretty easily. That was another good save. Couple of those for Timmy Adams in the first half. Yeah. Because if he doesn't save that, he's got Mr. Forster or Jago <laughs> chomping at the bit right in front of him. Well, he had that nice 1v1 save on a Jago a little earlier in this first half. Too much weight on that pass. Bjornsson couldn't get it settled. And now you see Virginia Tech maybe just a little out of sorts. Feels like, you know, and some of this could be the moving around, the shuffling of the pieces but not a, a very cohesive unit defensively right now for this. Well, we look, we look right now, again, yeah. on the press, and, and they're, they're coming together, but the communication, you can't leave Pew by himself with a huge gap behind him because it leaves everyone else defensively at a disadvantage. And you're right, there seems to be a little bit of panic. Sure. You know, so this is when you need your leaders to put a foot on the ball and, and calm everyone down. Let's keep possession, especially in the middle of the pitch. And, and I, I do wonder, we were talking with some of the Virginia Tech folks prior to the match, they really, this team really took that loss on Tuesday to Radford very hard and, and really changed the demeanor, more of a focused approach. The last couple of days of training heading into the match tonight, 
you do have to wonder with that approach to this match or maybe Virginia Tech a little too emotional in a game like this, knowing what's on the line for this Hokie club. Well, knowing what's on the line, and then and then your leader goes down, yeah. and it's you know it's hard to control those emotions. But you're right, uh, you can put a lot of pressure on yourself. You know, I know this this coaching staff does a a, a good job of, of relieving that. And one thing we know, Coach Briz told his team is is he wants them to be dogs. <laughs> you know, he <laughs> similar to Coach Prime out in Colorado, he wants dogs on the field and he wants them to fight for it. Um, but yeah, you can put a lot of pressure on yourself. I, I love the B dogs, and that really stems from earlier in the season, three straight draws against Loyola, Davidson, and North Carolina. And some of the staff said, "Hey, you know, dogs go out and win. You know, you got to be a dog." And to your point, that's been the, the mantra of this Virginia Tech team as of late. So to that point, they will continue the fight. This team will, will, will not relent, but they do have to be a more cohesive unit, as you mentioned. Well, where do they go for offense? And one, I guess the better question is how do they get anything going on offense? How do they connect passes against the way this Duke team is defending right now? Well, they, they've got to be more compact. They're, they're just they're too spread out. And there's too many spaces. And once they get it up top, they have to possess it. Let's get numbers of the field. Let's go together. Right now, there's um, unfortunately a little, little too much individual effort out there without teammate support. Another turnover and another foul against Duke. Seems like we're seeing a few more whistles, trying to rein in the the fouls a little bit here. Under 19 minutes to go in the first half. Ruff's done a good job you know, keeping control of this one. There's been a few cards and tough fouls, but most certainly has been a, a controlled game. Finner Diaz ready to put it in play. Finner Diaz, a native of Cyprus. How about this on the international level? He's eligible to represent Cyprus, Russia, and Greece at the international level. Not bad choice. <laughs> not. <laughs> not at all. Flicked on by Esco, who just subbed in a moment ago. Well, the, the international component of recruiting has been such a pivotal piece of the American game, especially over the last couple of decades. Into the box here. And again, just unable to, to fully possess it there for Virginia Tech. And but Cedric, that feels like a microcosm of the whole first half for the Hokies. It does. Just you know, the efforts there, but just the execution, especially in the final third, if they can get into the final third. They've only been in there a couple of handful of times tonight. Only have attempted one shot, but none of them on target yet. Conversely, Duke, three shots and two of them on goal. Ajago had one of those shots on goal, trying to work for some space here. I think Ajago wanted a foul and didn't get it. Hey, it's well defended. It's not easy to possess Forster Ajago when he has a head of steam. I didn't see a foul there. And another good play by Tino Lopez to chaperone that one away. Periano. You know, we talked earlier about the things needing to go right for Duke and one of them being goal differential. Obviously a long way to go, but I think from a Blue Devil perspective, you'd love to see a few more find the back of the net. Yeah, absolutely. Especially 15 minutes left in this first half. An unconscious mental goal has to be, let's get another one. Let's get another one. And not concede, most importantly. Yeah, we're right there. Yep. The goal differential doesn't work if you let goals by. You, exactly. You got to keep scoring and not let them score. Pretty simple game when you think about it, right? Sometimes it rates itself. <laughs> <laughs> Into the box and a little miscommunication there by Duke. Pass was telegraphed a bit there for Esco. And quickly, Duke the other way. And a foul on Aceto. And that might warrant a card, and it does. And we've seen more of that from Cam Aceto this year, where he is really, from, from that central defensive position, po po position has really stepped, and he can fly through this midfield. So we see without hesitation, Cam Aceto beats three players. If not fouled there, he's really in to goal with, with two, two options ahead of him. Sam White, the culpable party for Virginia Tech. And I love the reaction as if it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't do anything. <laughs> wasn't me. What do you want to see from Duke here on this set piece? Well, you want to see you want to see a quality, quality service. 
Um, and most importantly, a follow up on the second ball. Uh, there have to be numbers in the box looking for a rebound. But Marsalis can hit these. Marsalis strikes and knocked down by Timmy Adams. Maybe too direct there at the keeper? A little too direct. Yeah. From that far out, you have to have a little deceptiveness. He, he was too close. Yeah. He, he had too much, he had all that deceptiveness a little earlier. Final 15 minutes in change of this first half. It's really been the emo, uh, a emotional first half for Virginia Tech, their leader. Grant Howard going down with a apparent knee injury really early in this first half, over 34 minutes to go in the first half. And then Duke striking on really miscommunication on defense for Virginia Tech with 25 minutes to go in the first half to give Duke this 1-0 advantage. One thing you can't prepare for is an injury of that magazine. Yeah. You know, you can have a game plan, you can have an approach, but that's a reaction in the moment, both from the coaching staff and a player perspective. Now, I will say this Virginia Tech team, they've been better. You know, they've had more possession as, as they give it away, but have had more possession and do look more unified over the last five, 10 minutes. And I think we're, we're seeing some calming of the nerves and the, and the tempers and just trying to settle things down is a referee, Nick Bowser. Done a really good job, as you pointed out, keeping the peace in this first half. Yeah, he's, he's done a great job managing the game. I think a, a, a job of a great referee is to not make the game about them. You know, let the players play, especially in this league, as aggressively as possible, but keep things under control. He's done a great job of that. I want to go back to what you mentioned a second ago about Virginia Tech maybe having more possession and being a little better as of late. Is there anything you can pinpoint that the Hokies have done differently over the last five, 10 minutes to, to play a little better? Well, they, they've tried to solve the space in the midfield. Um, they still need to, to fix this press. Um, right now, they, they have one player pressing, and there's an immediate space behind that player where Duke has exploited several times, whether it be Tino Lopez or Cam Macedo stepping through or finding the quick ball to Kenny Hyatt and turning. They get it to Periano, do the Blue Devils off the deflection. Periano chips it in. Ajago heads one. And it's knocked away. And a really good play by Virginia Tech to keep that ball in and, and avoid a corner. Uh, the, the last two defensive efforts, specifically one-on-one -on -one with the Jago, have been, have been great. Uh, that's a goal, as we know, he can score. And down goes Esco. Let's go back and take another look at that chance by the Blue Devils a moment ago. So we see Nick Periano find the ball in space, immediately look up. He's looking for his big guy, Jago in the box. Forster saw goal number 13 right there. But again, great defensive effort. Defender did not give an inch, held his ground, and, and forced Forster into a bad header. And now Virginia Tech will put it back in play. And you know, Virginia Tech feels like, hey, one breaks our way. They get one in the final 13 minutes of the half. They're certainly right back in this match. Not that they're not in it at the current moment. Hey, all things considered, it's not a bad place to be in. That one gets all the way through, and Stone picks that one up. And this may be a larger conversation. As you look at this Duke team moving forward, and this will be a Duke team that will have a lengthy run, they hope, in the postseason and more soccer ahead of them. Ajago is certainly going to garner a lot of the scouting report, a lot of attention going to be marked very tightly, you would imagine, as you get in toward the ACC and NCAA tournament. How does Duke adjust to Ajago becoming the focal point and get him loose to get more goal scoring opportunities? Well, Forster Ajago transferred to Duke to be the guy in the ACC. You know, he sure. knew what he was signing up for, he knew the expectations, but now to your point, every team has film on him. You know, so it's going to become more of a challenge where uh, there's, going to, there's going to be a player, as we see Amir Daly with a good cutback here. Another great one-on-one -on -one defensive effort. I mean, ends in a foul, but, but really that's a dangerous play where if, if there's not the foul there, Amir's in the goal. But back to Ajago. Yeah, there's going to be film on him. You know, every team that they play moving forward is going to have a player replicating his style in practice, and that's just the expectations. But, hey, big-time players make big-time plays, right? Exactly right. He's made a ton of them for Duke. The transfer from Dayton. We'll talk more about him coming up at halftime. Blue Devils leading 1-0. By the way, the foul on Quill there. Quill's got some mixed emotions about playing here at Koskinen Stadium. Made his first career start here against Duke in 2021. And then went out injured early in that match. So wants to show himself a little better here on the pitch tonight. 
Good ball in. Adams punches another one away. Frederick with the header. And now still loose. Bjornsson had it chipped by. And the corner kick coming for the Blue Devils. Again, feisty defensive effort. Been really impressed by Timmy Adams tonight and a couple of the quality saves that he's made for this Virginia Tech team. Another good service played in. That's a great save. Now that had far post written all over it. Good job by Wayne Frederick sending it back across. And then you saw Esco get tangled up there with Ajago. Appears to be okay. And this time it's Periano who has the honor. Periano runs it down. Keeps possession on this end before the foul. I do like the defensive effort from this Hokie team. They are not backing down. They have raised their intensity significantly. And a yellow card has been issued to the Hokie bench. Coach Brizendine really not happy with this officiating crew, but to, to our judgment, done a pretty good job tonight. Done a pretty good job, but, that, but that's intentional. That's not by yes. mistake. You know, his team, this is again, a very emotional game. He's keeping his team charged. He's leading by example. He's, he's, he's instilling this intensity in this team. You know, sometimes, as you know, the coach has to take a card to prove a point. Seemed like a very intentional effort. Just can't say anything about the cards that you may or may not draw. That, that'll draw the ire of some people. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and might lighten your pocketbook a little bit, too. Yeah. As we've seen, right? <laughs> uh, but to, co to your point, Coach Brisson, he's really sticking up for his team here. I mean, he, he's pleading his case and sticking up for his guys who, who are working hard for him and his staff. Well, you know, and his players see that. And I mentioned him being a player's coach, and that's part of the job right there. His players feed off of his energy. And he's letting his players know, we're here to play, guys. We're not backing down from anything. And I have your back. I'll talk to the refs. You let me do that. You just play. Now another opportunity for Duke here on the set piece. Periano gets through, but nobody making a run there for Duke and Virginia Tech. Able to get it out of harm's way. And right space, just maybe if that ball's just a foot higher. Look at Esco making a run there, but Highstone gets it away quickly. Yeah, and these Hogies are pushing for it. They're pushing, they're pushing for an equalizer. So this is a Virginia Tech team that's maybe a little better when they can play with a little bit of pace. Yeah, it seems to be right now. Yeah. And, and some of this is, you know, playing with your opponent. This Duke, this is a powerful, fast pace counter-attack team Duke plays with, so you almost have to play the style to keep up. Some subs coming in now for Duke as the Blue Devils awarded the throw in. Luke Thomas. Bull Jorgensen also in. See Tino Lopez going to the bench. And Drew Curb also in for his dad's club. We see, we see the Curb boy swap spaces. Yep. Here's a Jago. He gets taken down, no foul. Went down a little too easy, big guy. Now Frederick to Daly. Under 10 minutes to go, first half. And one thing we'll notice is the depth of this Blue Devil team. You know, just made three subs. I promise you there will be zero drop off. These are all contributors. They've played a big role for this team in their success this season. Well, John Kerr said it to us earlier this year, forcing him and his staff to really make some tough decisions about who's going to be in, who's going to be out. And to your point, there are probably guys on this Duke team that could start for other teams in the ACC. There's a lot of guys on this Duke team uh, that could start for other teams, and, and that's been an incredible challenge with um, with so much depth on this team is managing that. And, and one thing I talked to Coach Kerr as well as several coaches about is with the new transfer portal rules. Rules, you're you're always working to keep each member of the team engaged and, and showing them how big of a part of the program they play and, and that they're being noticed. You know, one thing the Duke staff really does is routinely watch film of practice and and even in the heat, heat of the season when you can't do 11 v 11 every day, you know, everything matters. And there's a direct translation between effort and performance on the field and getting opportunity, but then seizing that opportunity when you have it. It's the comparison that he made to Tom Brady, who, who was not the best maybe in high school or not the highly recruited guy coming out of high school, wasn't drafted highly to the NFL, but 
the coach said, hey, you're only going to get two reps. You need to make those the best two reps that you can. Yeah. And I think that's a great way to compartmentalize. That's a great life lesson. And we're getting a card here on a Jago. This will be the third card on Duke this first half. Five cards total. Is this just the referee trying to rein things in a little bit? Yeah, I think he's trying to rein it a little bit. And we've seen a little frustration creeping up from a Jago. He's, he thought he's been fouled in the last couple of plays. And, and, you know, he's an energy guy. But definitely something the Blue Devils have to look out for. I suspect we'll see a, usually when uh, Jago gets a card, I suspect we'll see a sub pop up. Oh, and one in! It's wow. Esco who beats Eyestone and squares it up for the Hokies. Wow. Hey, what a great response from this Hokie team. I mean, they have really pushed the agenda this last 10 minutes. That was an effort goal that really started from their defensive performance in the back and is translated up top. Yeah, that's just that's just overall commitment. You know, we saw a focus. That ball bounced around several times. Three guys touched it. And just an awareness of the moment and ready to pounce on it. Second of the year for the rookie from Costa Rica. And Virginia Tech right back in it. That's an effort goal from Esco. Yes. That's just being there. Ball got by Tino Lopez right behind him, and he was ready to pounce on it immediately. Ben Fisher gets credit with the assist, and you see John Kerr there talking with Ajago. Probably telling Forrester, hey, that's probably a, that's a card. That's a foul we can't afford to take there at that juncture of the pitch. Well, he's telling him, hey, we need you, big guy. You know, you're a leader. Your teammates follow, follow your mannerisms, your effort on the field. This is when we need you to lead us. Now Duke looking to reclaim the lead. Periato trying to split a double team there. And Chris, we've got a game on our hands. We do. Yeah. Now, we talked about it earlier, Cedric. This is a Virginia Tech team, despite their 4-7-4 and four record. They are a very talented club. They are. And, and we talk, start, again, starts with the coaching staff. But this team believes they can play with anyone. Trying to step through there where the Blue Devils didn't get it. Now Daly settles. Right back to the middle and Wayne Frederick. And Chris, going back to that goal, and I'm sure it will be a, a focus at halftime, you just can't allow the ball to bounce around that many times in the box. Bad things happen. Which is a, a rarity from a, a Duke team that's been pretty good at not allowing that to happen this year. Oh, this team has been lights out defensively. And now Esco trying to make a run. He was looking for one, and now the Hokies again with some room to operate. Virginia Tech searching for the lead here. It's played into the box. Esco had it knocked down and then feathered away by Duke's defense. Chris, belief and confidence are very powerful, and we can see the longer Duke allows Virginia Tech to, st to stay in this game, they're, they're going to push the agenda. They have developed a lot of confidence in the last 10, 15 minutes. Periato, and too much on that one. Goal kick coming as Miguel Ramirez subs in for Duke. Ramirez, another one of those seniors, playing his final home game in the regular season here at Koskinen Stadium. And he will help solve this midfield. Miggy Ramirez is an effort guy. He will clog up the space, so that's a very strategic stop to stop this overrun we've seen in the last couple of plays. Really trying to restore order, it seems like John Kerr trying to do for the last five minutes and change. 100%, which is, is, is tough in game to make that adjustment, especially with only five minutes left. Virginia Tech feeling like they've got the momentum here. Maybe a chance to get one as a Blue Devil goes down behind the play. That's Frederick that's down. And a yellow card has been assessed to Declan Quill. And, and, the, and the way Frederick's reacting, I want to see this replay. It's the fourth yellow card on Virginia Tech this half. Bigger part in the third yellow card on Virginia Tech. Each side's got three. A little bit of sportsmanship there. Guys talking it out. Well, Amir Daly had his had his teammates back and Ooh. Yeah. That's uh that's not called for. Not sure I want to poke that bear. No. Hey, you know you got to right? All right. 
And, and a little surprising, too, for a guy that's in his third year playing college soccer. Just a, a frustration play there, probably. Frustration play, but another we talked about in Jago and, and in the moment, and that's just not a smart play. And we're going to go to video review here, Cedric. And I think... I, I suspect the night yeah. may be over. Yes. Yeah, that's just not uncalled for. No place for that in the game. Yeah, no, you're good. And when we mentioned the struggles, uh, unfortunately, that Quill had here in his first start at Duke, going down in the first 15 minutes of that match here in 2021. And so now we go to video review. And it's still pretty chippy out there on the pitch. Wayne Frederick having to be pushed away by some of his teammates. Wayne Frederick is an extremely emotional player. And it, uh, from my experience, it, it drives him. Uh, but there's no back back down in this team, and I think they're going to allow Quill to stay in the contest here. Just the yellow was issued. Let's take one more look, and this is the same thing the officials saw on the replay a moment ago, right side of your screen. Getting a little older, my eyes aren't as sharp as they <laughs> once were, maybe, but that <laughs> seemed pretty blatant to me. So fortunate for these Hokies to sure. have 11 guys on the field, uh, but that's just you, you you can't let down your teammates. And and just, again, this is too high profile of a game. It's too important of a game. He's too good of a player. Uh, so fortunate, Virginia Tech perhaps catching a break, and now we'll see if any team can capitalize on the last five minutes of the first half. Really been an, an odd first half. Duke's had the momentum for large stretches. Virginia Tech, oh, look at that move. Tremendous by the Blue Devils. And Luke Thomas into the box. Everything but the finish there for Thomas. And that was that was slippery. Luke, 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 Luke can Luke and, and do things <laughs> like that. And he got the Blue Devils started on Tuesday night with the first goal. Daly there in the middle. But, but it has been just this interesting pendulum shift of momentum in this first half. It has been. Aceto, another nice move. All right, now he's got a release. Back to Lopez. I think that foul woke these Blue Devils up a little bit. Another push there. Daly takes it away. Periano settling quickly now through the middle. Thomas. Now Brahmi, who checked in a few moments ago, Brahmi, the transfer from Cal. And Virginia Tech just trying to weather this storm from Duke right now. And this is where the Blue Devils want to be. They want possession as high up the field as possible. Virginia Tech's going to have to work to get out of their own half. Barely do. Kept alive. Kenua. It's kind of the heart and soul of this Virginia Tech team, number eight in maroon. Coach Bresendine says, we go as he goes. And that's been the case for several seasons. And we can see it in that effort. Great individual effort to open up space and keep the possession. Three minutes to go first half. Another battle in the ACC. The turnover. And oh, almost a really nifty play there by Duke. Quickly the throw in. Frederick trying to get free. And Timmy Adams out to play that one. Adams feels like the classic college story. Didn't play a lot his first two years. Played a little more this year. And has become the guy for Virginia Tech. Yeah, he's, he's proved it when given the opportunity. His teammates trust him, and he's been, he's been a... Kind of a juggernaut for this group. And I go back to if you want to pull an upset on a top 10 team, as Virginia Tech trying to do tonight, especially on the road, 
Probably have to have your keeper step up and make a couple of big stops on balls that would have been goals, and Adams has done that in the first half. Well, it instills confidence in your team when your goalkeeper keeper is, is, is having your back to that degree. Kenyua plays it off. Chipped away. Final 100 seconds of the first half. I think for, for both of these teams, obviously you don't want to give up a goal late in the half, but for the coaches too, would love to get to the half with no more cards being assessed to either side. I think both teams want to get in the locker room, especially these Blue Devils. Yes. They've been under assault. Uh, these last few minutes, and, and Virginia Tech has done a good job seizing the momentum. And I think for them, the start of this game, if you're going to go in 1 1 tied to the half, it's not a bad half. You know, for these Blue Devils, not what they want at all. No way, Uimama, the rookie who leads the team with four assists this year, will take the corner. Uimana, the rookie from Austin, service in. And I stole him there to Spirit. And he thought about playing it quickly, and now just punts it away. He did, like a young Jeff Haywood coming <laughs> off of that line. Final half minute of the first half. Virginia Tech playing inspired soccer here over the Final half of this opening half as one of their leaders goes down early. The Hokies get the equalizing goal with under 10 minutes to go in the first half and now looking for the lead, but it'll be a 1-1 game at the break. Really entertaining physical back and forth first 45 minutes. A very back and forth. I think both teams seize momentum at different times. A little disjointed from both teams at times, but hey, this is an AC battle, ACC battle. Second half will decide it. This is what you want, right? Final game of the regular season. Both these teams a lot to play for. Both matchups have been one goal differences. The last Virginia Tech win in 2019 was a two to one victory. And we'll see what has, well, the second half has in store for us here as Duke gets the opening touch of half number two. We'll also watch the physical nature of this second half too with all those yellow cards that were assessed both ways in the first 45 minutes. Chris, we may have a party in the second half. The music in the Koski is absolutely <laughs> banging tonight. Club Koski tonight. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Friday, right? Chance to look forward toward the postseason. How important is the start for both these clubs in the second half? I think this first five minutes is essential to both clubs for establishing your identity. As we mentioned, a lot of back and forth in that first half. Whoever seizes, and, and look, 45 minutes left, all you got. Uh, whoever seizes momentum early will have success. Nick Periano will take the fifth corner for Duke tonight. Blue Devils have been dangerous on set pieces all year. That one not quite cleared out. Nice play by Masalas to keep it on this end for Duke. Now Lopez just trying to flick one on for a Jago. It comes out where Daly plays it. Is it for Virginia Tech more about creating chances in the first five minutes or more about trying to weather this Duke attack that you know the Blue Devils want to have in the first few minutes of the half? Somewhat weathering the attack, but also you know creating your own identity. And I think that's possession. You know, where Virginia Tech found success in the first half, it was through defensive effort. Uh, and keeping the ball, you know, so if they can keep possession, especially in higher lines up the field and, and get teammates up. We mentioned when they looked disjointed, they were pressing with one player and there was space behind. So you want to see them as they move up. I'd like to see this back line over midfield and, and them compressing space. Good touch on there by Duke Bjornsson. Couldn't get a whole lot on it there. What do you think the biggest talking points were? What, what were the messages from these two coaches at halftime? Because I imagine pretty different conversations in the two different locker rooms. Uh, absolutely different conversations. I imagine in the Virginia Tech locker room, it was good job, men. We're being dogs out there. We worked our way back into this game. We've earned this opportunity. Let's see it out and shock the world. I think from a Duke perspective, I imagine the volume was pretty high from Coach Kerr. 
and it was a lot about you know missing opportunity you know and knowing the opportunity we have and not letting this game slip away and controlling our destiny good play by Amir Daly there defensively a moment ago to prevent that opportunity for Virginia Tech and now the Hokies will get a chance with their second corner of the night Luimana will have the service. Periano tries to play it on ahead, and Virginia Tech forced to retreat and build it again. And so far this half, Virginia Tech's done a good job absorbing pressure and, and relieving that outlet from the Blue Devils and resetting. Possession one by the Blue Devils there. Again, it was Uimana who was tightly contesting it there for Virginia Tech. Yeah, he's been a little bit of everywhere tonight. I remember Virginia Tech doing this without one of their key leaders and Grant Howard who went out with a lower body injury pretty early in this match. Well, and obviously a player you, you can't replace, you know, for what he means to them. But it is proud to see from a coaching perspective, they haven't dropped the level. In fact, they've probably been better. It's galvanized them. Hot trying to win it, but cannot. And you see now some frustration maybe creeping in a little bit for this Duke team. And again, a team with this pedigree, a team with the aspirations they have, this is a test. This is when they need to pull together and, and win the games you're supposed to win. A long way to go in this one, certainly. And our referee would say, hey, let's move it along a little bit here. Got pretty physical, pretty chippy there toward the end of the first half. We saw a little bit of everything. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> yeah, but to be expected in a game of this magnitude with so much on the line for very different reasons. Grosish with nobody home there for... Virginia Tech. Nobody home, but that's a dangerous ball across the front of the six. And you see Duke quickly wanting to play it there, trying to build that possession. And we see a reorganization of Virginia Tech's press. You know, they're not as disjointed. They're a little bit deeper. They want the Blue Devils, the two center backs, to play back and forth. They'll let them do it all day. You see the line of confrontation now is right over the semicircle versus Pugh was at the 18 and had no teammates behind him in the first half. Ajago trying to get free. Now the Blue Devils. Bjornsson. That one deflected. And it will be a corner for Duke. Good counterattack. And this Blue Devil team can just like that be in the mix again. And a pretty dangerous little combination there. We highlighted them at the start of our broadcast tonight. The rookie and the vet. Bjornsson and Ajago. They feed off of each other. They really do. Periano. Again with the honor. Good ball in. Frederick trying to get ahead on it. He did. But he just missed. But the Blue Devils will be awarded another corner here. And Virginia Tech has to be very careful in the far post in these set pieces, whether it's Periano or Marsalis playing these end swingers. They're always hitting that far post. Frederick has done a good job getting his head on a couple of those. Look, it's still impressive. I wish I could jump like that. You look for the Blue Devils to play it into the box here uh, again, or is this going to be one of those short corner kicks with Masalas and Periano over there? I think they're teasing the short corner, but it'll be Marsalis taking it. The lefty end swinger from that side. Away. Got a head on it. Virginia Tech trying to get out of harm's way. And now a drive! Top shelf and punched away again. Cam Kerr with the <laughs> absolutely lethal volley. That wasn't far off. Another tremendous save by Adams. Great hit from distance. And you're right, Adams. Really impressed with Adams and that goal. That is at least three absolutely quality saves he's made. Certainly helps to be 6-7 on that attempt. D different starting point. <laughs> yes, very much so. Don't have to jump quite as high, right? <laughs> Another good ball in. A collision there at the six. And I think the Virginia Tech player got the brunt of that and a foul against Duke here. And that Virginia Tech player a little shaken up. Probably wanted a card, pleading his case to no avail. That's 
Finner Diaz. And Finner I beg your pardon. Finner Idis, who has been involved a lot tonight with this Virginia Tech club. Yeah, just an unfortunate collision there, but definitely a foul. Didn't warrant a card. No. Good, good discernment from the referee. Julian Eystone will play it now. If you're Duke, you've had obviously several chances now. Really, in this second half, balls on your attacking third of the pitch, are you Pleased with the effort that you're getting so far? Maybe a little frustrated you couldn't convert one of those. Uh, pleased with the effort, which has been better than it was at tell into the first half, but the execution still isn't there. And this team can execute. A, a big focus for several games now has been getting into the box, getting touches as high up the field as possible. To do that, you have to build and possess. And Periano just wasn't ready for that one. Could have been. Again, just the execution, yeah. the final third. We've seen that a couple times tonight where. You know, balls are laid off and a teammate may not be on the same page. Another foul there in the midfield. And we're seeing some of that chippiness start again here. I expect it to be a, a pretty chippy second half. A lot on the line for both of these teams. And Duke with a win tonight and, and some help, sure. But you have to take care of your business here first if you're the Blue Devils. They could finish in the top four of the ACC, a loss and some help the other way, Duke could drop all the way down to the 10th spot. Which is just crazy to think about for the number eight team in the country. Ajago heads one through, and the Blue Devils have the lead. It's the rookie, Bjornsson. Hey, the rookie and the vet the rookie combined and the again. A hey, great combination play from these two. Forster Ajago plays the ball very unselfish. He could have gone for goal. Plays it to his teammate across the box. We talk about getting touches in the box. Bjornsson with an absolutely lethal finish to the corner. All right, we see it again. Good ball in from Frederick. Unselfish play from Forster Ajago. Instead of going to goal, he, founds, he finds his main man streaking across the box. It's what, four goals in the last two games? George is a little bit of a heater right now. Coming off the hat trick against Howard. And Ajago, who went the entire season without an assist, now has three in the last game and a half. And a two to one lead for Duke. Frederick will also get credit with an assist for the Blue Devils, his third of the campaign. That's a quality goal, my friend. And now for Virginia Tech, obviously changes. Now down a goal, and you've probably got to take a few more chances to go forward, don't you? Well, yeah, and that, that came from the Duke pressure. We mentioned, you know, how are they pleased with their start? This first 10 minutes has been constant, constant pressure, unrelenting. Pressure bus pipes. That's what happens. Virginia Tech avoiding the turnover for a moment. Frederick called for the foul. And Mise Yoshizawa, member of the ACC All-Freshman team last year, the one that was fouled. Been a key cog for Virginia Tech this year. A couple of goals for the Hokies. We also mentioned in the first half the propensity of this Virginia Tech team this year to concede goals really in bunches. So if you're Duke, maybe you can try to go for, for a, a big knockout punch here. Guarantee you that was discussed at halftime. If we get one, let's go for another one right away. Now Virginia Tech looking for the equalizer. Ooh. Dangerous there, Virginia that Tech. Very close to being a push in the box. Yeah. And boy, the Hokie bench can't believe it. And I think Roche has, has, a, has a case there. Watch 11 in maroon there. Yeah, that, that one could have gone either way. Unfortunately, from a Duke perspective, they got the break there. Well, got the break, but you know that's still a lesson mm -hmm. of, of situational awareness, and that's just simply a, a, you can't put yourself in that situation where the ref has to make a call. And I'm sure that'll be one that is dissected by the coaching staff and film study heading into next week, especially as you get into that winner go home mentality. Those small mistakes, those small mental lapses, could cost you your season. Well, it could. I mean, not only is that a potential penalty kick, that's a potential last man back. There's card scenarios. I mean, there, there's a lot that could go wrong. So yes, that, I guarantee you that will be a, a very teachable moment 
reviewed in film this week. Daly trying to track it down for Duke. A hard collision there. It'll be possession to the Blue Devils. A little shaken up there is Uimana for Virginia Tech. Still plenty of time in this second half for Virginia Tech, but certainly got to get something going here sooner than later. Yeah, there's plenty of time, but but the way they have to stem in this Duke attack. Right now, Duke is really having their will when they have possession. <laughs> Knocked down. Good play by Daly. Great 1v1 effort from Amir Daly. Luivana. Kinula. Where's that captain's armband for a reason? Kept in. On your back, on your back. Look at Ajago trying to create some havoc there for Duke. And that's that's really what you want to see out of your, your target nine, doing the work to get back. His teammates see that. Trying to play one for Ajago. They get it to him. And now Ajago the other way. And here comes this counterattack. It's been a lethal connection for Duke. Ajago looking for one. Ajago puts it in. And Duke by two. Hey, Chris, it's da dancing time in Koski. Here it comes. A phenomenal goal, and you know it is started with the defensive effort from Ajago dropping back in the midfield, created that pressure, created imbalance. Outlet, he continues to run. Bjornsson does what he does. Slippery pass in behind. That's a great finish from Forster Ajago. Ajago now with his eighth goal in his last nine matches. A Baker's dozen on the season, and guess what? It's the rookie and the vet who do it again for the Blue Devils. Hey, zero to 100 real quick, my friend. Forster does the work, wins that ball back, plays his main man. Bjornsson returns the favor from a few moments ago. Forster finds his corner. And Virginia Tech, one of the offside flag to go up here. What'd you see? Right, that wasn't an offside. That was a well-timed run. It started at midfield. And we mentioned they give up goals in bunches. That's what, two in the last four minutes? Mm -hmm. Almost exactly four minutes apart. And the 13th of the year for Forrester Ajago. He's climbing up that single season chart at Duke. He's climbing up the national leaders as well. His coach might be uh, sweating that 15 goal mark right now. I, I have a feeling if Ajago passes John Kerr, he's going to be OK with that. Nothing would make him happier. And then that's, you know, one, the type of coach and man yes. he is. But he predicted it, he did. you know. <laughs> now, do you think Coach Kerr knew that he scored 15 goals in his career? I think Coach Kerr is highly aware <laughs> of, of all of those statistics. <laughs> <laughs> Good sportsmanship there as Bjornsson helping Drennan up. 11, out. Have to ask him about that next time we see him. Hey, if, if I know him like I do, he'll downplay it a little bit. But I guarantee you <laughs> he has not forgotten. Lobbed in. And now really, from a Virginia Tech standpoint, Cedric, disastrous last four or five minutes. Just exactly how you couldn't start this half. You know, we talked about what they were looking to do, and, they, and it's been the exact opposite. You know, what I've seen is a different Duke team, a more focused Duke team, a Duke team, again, aware of the moment and magnitude, and they're creating their own destiny right now. And obviously, Virginia Tech going to continue to play their game. They have to go forward a little more, have to be a little more aggressive from a Duke perspective. How important is it not to get caught with one of those fouls, one of those card situations where maybe you're a little bit late and that could result in a devastating blow moving forward? Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned this thing's getting really chippy. I mean, there's fouls and balls being thrown at players, and we saw a head block in the yeah. first half. I mean, a lot going on right now. But, yeah, to your point, this is game management. You know, you want to continue scoring, but also looking forward to the future. There's a lot of soccer left to play, and the last thing you want is to – have something stupid happen that can compromise the success of this team in the next match. Take another look back at this foul and then a little bit of uh, how do you do at the end of it. And there's the 
how do you do? I mean, there's been a few WWE style moments out here. I mean, but look, referee again, great control of this game, knowing when it's time to pull a player aside and have a talk. It's Fenneritis there for Virginia Tech. Ariano just flicks it on for Masalas. Now Masalas a blast in front. Still loose. It's in, but the flag is up. A foul. A little bit of trickery there. Yeah. That almost worked out really well. Boy, a dangerous ball in by the Blue Devils. Great service in from Rosales, and I can tell just, just by the reaction of the teammates, this is something they have trained in practice quite a bit. You had three Duke guys on the six waiting for that rebound. Now another turnover in the attacking zone for Duke. Here's a Jago. Oh, another nice play by Virginia Tech to keep that one off of a Jago's boot. Kerr for Periano. Into the box, Ajago unable to get there. And that one knocked away nicely by Lopez. And Tino Lopez had zero margin for error on that yep. tackle as the last man back on a yellow card. And you know, one of the things for this Duke team, as you see it here, how good they've been in the second half. This is updated to reflect the two goals tonight, that they're outscoring their opponents. 28 to 6 in the second half, and they outshot their opponents by almost 100, 154 to 157 in the second half. And really hats off to the coaching staff, you know, to being able to make those adjustments and really fire this team out and focus them coming into these second halves. But this team has a closing mentality. I'm sure from a Duke perspective, we'll love just to start the game in the second half. Yeah, that's actually been thrown around a few times. <laughs> Let's just stay in the locker room and come out in the second half. But it also speaks, I think, you think about what Duke has done, being able to score first. Now, that doesn't mean it's a first-half goal, right? But it means they've been able to get on the board first, and they're comfortable playing from ahead because they've been ahead in so many matches this year. Absolutely, and, and must point out the effort from Jorgensen to yes. keep that ball in play, and we've seen that from both of these forwards consistently throughout the season. But yeah, and these Blue Devils have an awareness. They know what their record is after scoring. Sure. You know, they sense it. They, they get more confident. Deep throwing into the box here. Bjornsson settles. Tried to play one for Ajago. A notion to go to Kerr. Virginia Tech trying to get it out of harm's way. A lot of action on this third of the field here in the second half. And another really nice play there by Kenny Hot. Great commitment to defensive effort. Kenny Hot just tracked. Tracked it, his, his mark down from the 18. Marcos Esco back in for Virginia Tech. Rowish is out. McClendon also in. Remember, Esco was the goal scorer for Virginia Tech in the first half. And McClendon, who's only played in three matches this season for Virginia Tech, but he's been a guy that's played in some high-profile matches in his career. And a nice guy to be able to bring in off the bench if you're Virginia Tech and you're looking for a spark as the Hokies are. Yeah. Now it's time. you got to have a spark. Under 30 minutes left in the match. Thought Esco did a good job when he came in the first half of really opening things up. Help them, help them refine their press. And, of course, scored the goal. Nick Laffey, a freshman, is in for Virginia Tech from Germantown, Maryland. Just his fourth match of the season. And is this just... Virginia Tech's coaching staff searching for a spark, searching for someone to, to make a play. It's absolutely what it is. You know, no, nothing to lose at this point. Let's see who can give us a spark. You know, we've seen something in training, and this is a challenge for these guys. Daly to toss it in for Duke. Just nice to listen in for a moment. Yeah, there's there's a lot of talking going on out there. And we mentioned the dog mentality yeah. of this Virginia Tech team. They will not back down. There's Esco going forward. Good ball here. And Lopez 
Remember, playing with that yellow has to be cautious for the Blue Devils. And I'm sure he was reminded at halftime, and T Tino being a senior captain, one of the leaders on this team, he knows how important it is for him to finish this match. Again, a good job measuring that tackle, making sure he got ball, leaving nothing to be decided by the referee. Quick corner there by Virginia Tech. And Lopez able to head one away. And Daly just clears it. Clock is the ally of Duke, but still a long way to go. A lot of time left in this match. Some space. Now into the box. That was Laffey who had it for a moment. Ajago unable to track it down. It goes back to Adams, who will start things for Virginia Tech. And Adams had nothing short. Duke did a good job of shutting off every short outlet, and it worked out. Esco got on the other end of it. Once again, Tino Lopez right in the middle of the fray for Duke. Tino has been such a good player for this team this year. And Esco commits the foul, and Esco gets... A red card. Whenever you see a referee running that aggressively reaching for his pocket, it usually is not going to end well. That, that's just not a smart foul. Wasn't a play on the ball. It's just asking for bad things to happen. And now, even a little more chippy. Esco, the freshman, the only goal scorer for Virginia Tech, and it is the third red card assessed to Virginia Tech as a team this year, and there'll be a man down the rest of the match. Just frustration. Tino Lopez was clearly by him and just, just made a decision he was going to take him out. I certainly hope from a Duke perspective that Lopez is okay. That would obviously be a big loss for the Blue Devils. And we are going to go to video review here, it appears. There was a borderline play in the first half where a, perhaps a red card could have been assessed to Virginia Tech. It was not. You see Lopez up and walking off, which is a great sign. And I think we're just confirming that it was a red card type foul as the referee takes a look at it. And you see just, sorry, Cedric, the, the frustration boiling over from the youngster for Virginia Tech. That's exactly what happened. That, that's pure frustration. He's tracking back across the field. He's, he's getting beat, and he'll learn from that. And now you've put your teammates at a disadvantage where they had, were you know, already in a disadvantaged position, and now you're playing with 10 men the rest of the game. Yeah, to, to your point, with, with one of your leaders and Howard going out in the first 15 minutes of this match with that lower body injury, now, now, playing a man down, really, you're two men short on your bench if you're Virginia Tech and Coach Mike Brizendine. Well, in that situation, without one of your leaders, your margin for error is already very slim, and now you've just made it even more difficult. And the referee will go over and have a word with John Kerr and his staff. See Michael Brady, they're saying no, no, no to some sort of instruction. I'd love to hear that conversation right now. <laughs> Coach Brady does not mix words. But I'm sure a little instruction on, hey, let's finish this game with 11 players. You know, no retribution. Let's calm this game down. It, it was certainly physical in the first half. And Duke scoring those two quick goals here in this half did not diffuse the situation at all. Ball into the box. Frederick trying to get free. And Virginia Tech now. Certainly the, the challenge for the Hokies is a little steeper. So it's a tougher mountain to climb now for Virginia, for Virginia Tech. Down two goals and down a player. Well, it is, and you can understand the frustration, especially... Not just the loss on Tuesday, but, but the way they lost. Yep. You know, but but coaching at this level is not the adversity. It's how you react to the adversity. 
and, and a coach of Coach Briz's character, he's he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna harp on this and really review this, and they're gonna learn something collectively, you know, from some mistakes made this evening. And, and the season certainly not over after tonight for Virginia Tech. Oh, not at all. There's still a lot of games to play. And a team that, that has the pieces to make a run in this ACC tournament coming up next week, however, could be at a disadvantaged position with, with Esco not being allowed for their first ACC tournament game. And then, no, we don't know the status of Howard, who went down earlier in the match. Well, that's why these late season games, it is so imperative to keep your cool and to understand the magnitude of the moment. And just, just a frustration play like that, you not only hurt your team for this game, but for the next game as well. And that's coming from your goal scorer, who's, who's been a spark. And some of that probably is a, a first-year player being a first-year player, right? I mean, I know coaches like to think of their, their players as not first-year players when you get this late into the season, but sometimes you have those momentary lapses in judgment. At the end of the day, these are still young men. Absolutely. And they're still learning many things. And control of emotions is one of them. A two-goal lead for Duke to break open this 1-1 game at the break. And really, to this juncture in the second half, Duke has been in full control. Oh, absolute control. Definitely a tell of two halves. First half was back and forth. And momentum swings. This Really, the second half has been all Blue Devils. Busy night around the ACC as we close down the regular season. Notre Dame and Pitt, one of the marquee matchups in this league tonight. A couple of top 20 teams are battling in South Bend. It was a pretty competitive game uh, at the first half and continues to be so now. Notre Dame is now leading five to nothing, we're being told. Wow. That is didn't see that didn't see Did that coming. Did not see that coming. Three second half goals for the Irish. And Notre Dame tonight maybe demonstrating why they are one of the top teams in the country. Yeah, no, Notre Dame can flat out play. <laughs> but five goals against Pitt. That's pretty good. Doesn't happen. <laughs> Carolina, North Carolina and Virginia still nil-nil. That's an important one for Duke. The Blue Devils, if they want to finish fourth, they have to finish off their victory tonight, but obviously need some help. Virginia and Duke kind of battling right there for that four spot. Syracuse also in the mix. There's a good service in, and the ball just wide on the header. That was a great service again. And the Blue Devils on set pieces. All the services have been quality tonight. But no, it was first at this great opportunity for Duke. Periano had the service. Periano with a good ball in. You've got Cam Aceto as well as Ajago there. Aceto got his head on it, just missed that corner. But Duke needs some help. It, it, and I think from a Blue Devil perspective, you would love it just to be a head-to-head -head Duke and Virginia. If Syracuse somehow gets into the mix, then it goes into goal differential because not every team played everybody in this unbalanced schedule. It's, it's a lot to figure out. It was dizzying when we were reviewing those scenarios today with, with how many different directions this conference can go this evening. I'm glad I don't have to be the one to figure it out. Oh, turnover there. Ajago couldn't raise it down as Adams comes out to grab it. And that's a good job by Adams getting off that line. That was a lot of space to close pretty quickly. But we, we know sort of the most of the, the top three in some form or fashion. It'll be Notre Dame who will be the top seed in this ACC tournament. Then it'll either be Wake Forest or Clemson, two or three, and then four through the rest. <laughs> Pretty wide open. It's all up for negotiation this evening. But I think that's how you like it as a fan, right? Yeah, that's the way it should be. A conference of this magnitude. Nice play by Kerr. It'll be a corner coming for Virginia Tech, though, with 20 minutes to go. And I imagine if Virginia Tech is going to find a way to get back in the game, it's on these set-piece opportunities. Exactly. These are the time you can focus on something you've drawn up, and and we're having 10 men doesn't matter as much as it does in the run of play. Settled. That was Kinyoa. 
Trying to get it to Kenyo and look at Amir Daly again, stepping in front for Duke. Amir Daly has been all over the place tonight. Really, Daly and Lopez. Yeah. The usual cast of characters usual for Duke. Cast. Hey, Duke's got a few dogs as well. Bull Jorgensen will check back in for Duke. All for Bjornsson's night, probably done. 19 minutes to go. Good night for the rookie. A goal and an assist. Continues to be on that hot streak after the hat trick on Tuesday against Howard. Three more points tonight. An extremely good effort this evening. Not only scoring them, but getting his teammates involved. That's what he's asked to do. Now, we talked about goal differential earlier. If there is a, a three-team heat between Duke and Virginia and Syracuse, Blue Devils right now don't have the goal differential. They're actually four back of Virginia in goal differential. Is that still playing a factor into the mind of the Blue Devils now with 18 and a half minutes left? Well, we, we heard Coach Kerr's pregame speech today, and he did he did not. There was no confusion in his message. It was we need to score, we need to score often, and we need to, we need to control our destiny. So yeah, I'm sure that was reiterated at halftime, especially with with an opportunity with Virginia Tech being down a man. This is where you have to capitalize. So I would definitely expect maybe a couple more before this evening's over. We'll see. I'm not going to see the Blue Devils rest on their laurels at all tonight. No, there, there will be no packing it in and, and knocking it back and, and, and resting for the next match. Do have some time off, which is fortunate for, for all of these clubs. Duke would love to have some extra time off if they could finish in the top four. Well, and that's another point is there's, there's again, an extreme amount to play for and, and getting a first round by in the ACC tournament Get your players healthy, additional time to train, additional time to work on different tactical aspects and prepare for opponents. That's a valuable this point in the season. A couple balls loose there in the midfield. Here it comes to Daly now. Through the middle. Jorgensen, Ajago off the deflection. So from a solace now who had a great ball in earlier that resulted in a goal for Duke. Periano. Now right back to Masalas from Ramirez. Good ball in. Ajago couldn't get to it. Daly will track it down. Oh, what a play by Daly. Keeps it alive. Tremendous effort by Duke. And a little too much air on that one. Uh, and Cam Kerr wishes he had that one back. He had a Jago wide open to the far post. But talk about individual effort. Amir Daly, we talked about him being a professional prospect. Look at this. That is just pure 1v1 effort. I'm going to beat the man in front of me. It's been such a leader for this Duke team. And we're seeing Grant Farley check in now for the Blue Devils. Or about for the bigger part, it's uh, Jordan Hyde for Virginia Tech. Pardon me. Connor Jordan Hyde is in for Virginia Tech tonight over for Timmy Adams. And despite the three goals for Duke tonight, a pat on the back for the effort that Timmy Adams gave for Virginia Tech this evening. Uh, Adams should be extremely proud of his effort, made several crucial saves. If he's not in goal, there's probably a couple of others that go in. Connor Jordan Hyde's made 12 saves this year. Might get tested immediately with Ajago in front. Ajago keeps it alive. And a save made. Another ball deflected. What a great ball from Cam yes. Kerr. Early ball, a little deceptive be before his opponent expected it. He does such a good job feeding balls in his forwards. Amir Daly's feeling it right now. Can Ajago track this one down? He can. Now for Periano in the middle. And Periano maybe just a, a little bit too much there. Had to hop off his boot. Well, a little heavy touch, and I think he got indecisive the last minute. He saw Masalas running right behind him, and I think was caught in between leaving it or touching it and just took a heavy touch. If you're just joining us, you see now Virginia Tech is a man down with that red card in the 65th minute. Really two men down as Howard goes down with injury in the first 15 minutes of the match. 
Nice move. Uimana. Daly again, right there. Amir Daly is making the most of his senior night in Koskinen. Drew Kerr will check in for Duke. Marco Vesterholm back in for the Hokies. Take a look back at how we got to this point. Three to one Duke lead in the first half. It was Duke striking first. Masalas had that nice ball in, deflected off a of Virginia Tech player. And Duke struck first. And then Esco with this nice finish after Duke couldn't get it out of harm's way. And then it's the Blue Devils. A Jago to the Jorgensen to put the Blue Devils on top. And then the Jorgensen returns the favor. It was time for a Jago to do a, little, do a little dance. The rookie and the vet times two. And a three to one Duke lead with under 14 minutes left. And really impressed with the, the selflessness of both of those guys playing up top, creating opportunities for each other. Uh, Forster Jago early in the season at times would force the issue. And really starting to trust his teammates and, and it's just it's making this team so much better. Kerr. Ajago now for Periano. Quick touch by Ajago, tried to leave one off from a solace. And we, we talk about it being senior night for Duke and 11 seniors and, and what they've done for the program. And, and it's you know, hard to re forget some of the other players that would have been part of this senior class had they not gone on to play professionally. And, and just the caliber of player, yes, but the caliber of people that John Kerr and his staff are turning out in this program on a yearly basis. Oh, absolutely. There's one big one by the name of Peter Stroud. Yeah. Put in great work for the New York Red Bulls right now, but this senior class means a lot to him. You know, they they played, they they came in during the COVID period. They really, you know, he, he said they could have had the opportunity to to let things happen, but instead they seized the moment and really determined what they wanted this team to be, what they wanted their career to look like, and they've really stayed together. There's a reason several of them have been captains since their sophomore year. A lot of leadership on this pitch tonight. And he was, you know, we talking about Amir Daly going to be become a pro. And there will be other guys on this Duke roster that will be professional players. And he's all for developing guys to go to the professional ranks. I mean, that's kind of what this is all about, right? It's developing players. Well, and he encourages it. And, you know, but when you're ready. And that time comes at different periods for others. But he has encouraged several players. We mentioned Peter Straub being one of them. He knew it was time for him to go. And it's something he encouraged and, and encouraged them to take advantage of it. And, you know, recruits see that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important, the, the selflessness of that from a coaching perspective is making sure you're doing what's best for the young man in the situation. Yeah, we talked about Virginia Tech, their side coach, Brizendy, being a player's coach. You could make it the, the same case for John Kerr on the Duke side. I play for Coach Kerr any day. He's really cares about these boys, and they know it. Masalis, a blast! Oh, a Nice save there by Connor Jordan Hyde, who checked in recently. And a foul against Frederick. A little bit of a tardy whistle there. Take another look at this nice save by Connor Jordan Hyde, the redshirt senior. This was a great left-footed in-swing and hit from Marsalis. Ball had some movement on it. Connor Jordan Hyde made his first start since August 31st against Radford earlier this week. Three games last year. His dad, by the way, how about this? Connor Jordan Hyde, the new keeper for Virginia Tech. His dad, James, represented the United States at the 88 Olympics in Seoul in weightlifting. Wow. Into the box. Frederick is there. And top shelf, Wayne Frederick, the sophomore, makes it 4-1 to one Duke. Oh, my. Wayne Frederick, take a bow, young man. That was a professional goal. We talked about professional players on this team. That was a professional finish. And he has been a more prolific finisher this season with several goals in the season. Wow, what a hit. His second of the season. And Frederick, an exclamation point for Duke. And just the effort. Starts with Bull over in the corner. Forster holds the ball up. Quick ball. We talked about third man running in the first half. Wayne Frederick continued his run, made himself an option, and what a finish. 
Little flick. That's not an easy ball to finish. Full speed, getting the right touch on it. Ball coming across from an awkward angle. That's a highlight reel. And now with 10 minutes to go, you see the Blue Devils maybe going a little deeper into the bench, cultivating a little more depth here. Ajago, by the way, gets the, assist, the assists, another one. Ajago didn't have an assi a single assist all year, and he's had four now in the last two matches. I don't know what's going on with him. Man. He's just... <laughs> <laughs> but really, it's a testament to, and I know this is something the coaching staff's been working with him on, is making his teammates better. He can score whenever he wants. But if he can get his teammates involved and he's scoring at the clip he does, this team is so dynamic. Go for Bjornsson back in. Luke Thomas also back in for Duke. Ten minutes to go. Four to one Duke lead. And Duke's still pressuring, we mentioned earlier. Duke knows about this goal differential they got to make up if there is a three-way tie. Well, I predicted a couple more with 18 minutes left. They look like they have another one in the bag. And we've seen Ajago create goals in that fashion with his press on a couple of occasions this season. Now a great opportunity here for Duke. Periano and Kerr. Where do you look for this ball to go? Periano. Periano is going to take this. It's going to come right across the six, I would expect. They're going to try to get ahead on it. Uh, good placement. And Virginia Tech the other way. If you're Virginia Tech now, nine minutes to go down three, what are you hoping to accomplish in these final nine minutes? Finish the game, play for 90 minutes, don't let up. Even though this one's pretty much been decided, there's still a lot to play for, and you're playing for the next match at this point. And so how you finish this game means a lot in terms of your character and culture. Into the box, another chance for Ajago, who was making a nice run. But the Blue Devil was unable to connect there. He did not miss that one by much. Good early ball from Luke Thomas. Another near miss. Almost a fifth goal for Duke. You feel like if Virginia Tech able to finish the game strong, whether that results in a goal or not, just continuing, you mentioned to play for the culture, does that create momentum going into the ACC tournament? Well, it's a lot of his pride and not conceding anything else. But yes, it does create momentum. You know, this game has to be a springboard to the next game in some way. So you have to find something positive. And maybe trying to find folks to step up now with down at least one player in uh, Esco, who got the red card earlier this half, and maybe down two, depending on Howard's injury that he suffered in the first half. Yeah. There's uh, there's a lot that's going to have to be decided and reviewed after this match as they prepare. There's Amir Daly again, by the way. Looking like Neymar Mamo back there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Amir Daly is absolutely in his bag this evening. And a foul. Ajago goes down. Let's take another look at the Amir Daly highlight reel. Hey, that takes some confidence to go for the Meg and your 18. You know, with that foul on Frederick in the first half, I saw Amir Daly was the first player to come to, to come to his defense, and he's really played with a different chip on his shoulder ever since then. Another foul there as Ramirez goes down. Virginia Tech, as you can see, playing a man down after that card earlier. Ramirez gets tangled up. And with the way this match has gone, not surprised that, that maybe things that wouldn't have been called early in the match are getting called a little later here. Yeah, and I, th I think this is honestly protecting the players yep. from themselves. Let's keep this game calm. The game's already been decided. Last thing you want from a Duke perspective, as you mentioned, is a silly foul that's going to impact the next match. Oh, another one for Duke. What a ball in. What a finish. Bjornsson again. Well, you mentioned when he went out with 19 minutes, he may be done for tonight. He was far from done. Bjornsson is looking at his bright future right now through that lens. 
What a finish. He is so good on the one-touch finishes, whether it be an assist to set up a teammate. What a ball from Periano. What a finish. This is not an easy ball to finish. Oh, just a flick. Five goals in the last two games for the rookie. All for Bjornsson. He's feeling it. A hat trick and now a brace. I think he's still in the thunder from these seniors a little bit. He, tur he turned it into rookie night. Absolutely fabulous goal from Bjornsson. Just having the wherewithal and touch to finish that. Driving ball at you. It's a great flick. Possible for a keeper to react to that. You talked about it earlier in the broadcast, the international players and how prominent they are now in the American game and the American college game. We've talked about it a lot. Bjornsson, another player for, from Iceland, the fourth player that Duke's had from Iceland in the last four years. That matters. The success that Bjornsson's having immediately matters as you look big picture for the Duke program and college soccer as a whole. Trust me, Coach Kerr's got a big smile on his face right now. He spends a lot of his offseason overseas recruiting different areas. And you're right, the success of these players, you know, his, his players are watching this back in Iceland. And that just helps get the next player to fill in. Had a pretty good Icelandic kid that could score a few goals not, not a, <laughs> in, in recent memory. He was all right. He was all right. Asalas will take the service for Duke. 21 shots for the Blue Devils tonight. And then maybe another one for Wayne Frederick. A brace for the sophomore. All about the underclassmen tonight. The youngins are still in the show, Chris. I, I, I mentioned in that foul in the first half, you might have poked the bear a little bit. Hey, the bear's awake. He's here. From a Duke perspective, I don't think you could ask for a better finish to this game. We talk about building momentum before the ACC tournament. And now what I love the most from a coaching perspective is senior night. Let's get some guys in. Let's give them their opportunity to shine. It's the first career brace for Wayne Frederick, the sophomore from Maryland. Third of the season, of course, two of them tonight. And the night done for Ajago. He'll come over and give some high fives. Hey, before he greets his coach, he had to take care of the fans. I love it. And Bjornsson now done for real, I think. The rookie and the vet going out together. How about that? Hey, they did their job tonight. The dynamic duo did it once again. I think we should trademark that phrase. I think so. Five plus minutes to go. Obviously, some of these goals given up by Virginia Tech have been with the man down, and Duke obviously really trying to get that goal differential in case there is a three-way draw in the ACC tournament, but still a very impressive night for the Blue Devils. 13 goals over their last two matches. They, yeah, they're, they're scoring goals in bunches right now. And that goal differential just got a little bit shorter. It did. Especially if that score line maintains in that, that Virginia game. Which at last report was still nil-nil. Virginia and North Carolina. Ball in there. Seeing Duke really working to get a lot of guys in now. Good to see Lewis McGarvey back in for Duke. A player that's worked so hard to get back with three surgeries over the last two years, I believe. Been such a leader for this team, even though it hasn't been on the field. It's good to see him rewarded and get back out there. Made his first appearance against Elon, playing 16 minutes earlier in October. It was his first action since November of 2021. You and I were on that. We got we to were. share that moment. Yeah, we that did. Was, that was a big moment. Turned over. Leaking behind the defense. And again, another stop by Eyestone. Another good run there by Kenyua. Seeing a few of those guys come off the bench, making an immediate impact for Duke. Crew Verratti also in there for the Blue Devils, another senior. 
Well, you mentioned the Tom Brady story. Yeah. Coach Kerr told us. And Here is Kerr. Ooh, that one high. Drew Kerr can absolutely hit bangers <laughs> with that left foot. I've seen him do some scary things. And a, a nice hand here, too. Jacob Hochstein will check in his first action. Nice hand for Julian Eyestone. And it's a win-win there. You get a guy in on senior night, and you can applaud Eyestone for a phenomenal regular season. And, you know, kudos to these teammates for, for handling business to allow some of these guys to get in. Love to see the seniors get rewarded. Hats off to the coaching staff again for keeping everyone engaged and rewarding these guys who work hard every day. We may not see it on the field, but they've earned this time. Kerr. Into the box. Set with Verratti. Oh, just wide. You, you talk about a great ending, and you can see the love from the teammates. They wanted Crew Verratti to get that goal. And he did everything but the finish. Yeah. I mean, what a touch on that. Brought it down with his chest. Almost banged it home. Great ball from Drew Kerr coming across the box. Is that Luke Thomas holding yeah. it up? Oh. Very close to being a moment right there. Final two and a half minutes. I am curious your, your perspective on, on this Duke team as they head into the postseason. Obviously playing at a tremendously high level, but this is a Duke team that will go into the postseason this year a little different than they have in the last couple of years. You know, there's been some undefeated regular seasons for the Blue Devils over the last couple of years. Now together, good ball in, and another goal! It might have been a brummy, it was. Fami, his third of the year. Hey, he's another guy, the Cal transfer. He can score goals in bunches. It doesn't take him much time. Love to see the smile on his face. He's earned that one. It's a great finish. These Blue Devils are not dropping the level. Virginia Tech can't wait for this final whistle to get here. 14 goals in the last two matches for Duke. And se seven goals against Howard is one thing. Seven goals against an ACC opponent is a whole other ball game. And this is just great individual effort on this goal. Shifty move from the left side. Got a little, he got a little deflection in there. A little help from Virginia Tech back line. Still counts. And we saw that shot of the Virginia Tech bench. If a picture was worth a thousand words, that one worth a million. Might need a Snickers right now. <laughs> Tough night for the Hokies. Yep. But to finish the thought, th this Duke team has gone into the postseason last couple of years. No losses, one regular season loss. Feels like there's a lot more pressure when you can do something. When your first loss is in the postseason. And in one case, it abruptly ends your year. Does that change the mindset at all for Duke going in, having three losses this year? Well, I think, you know, you talk about this team to, to whom much is given, much is expected. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this is a team that has achieved really good things thus far, but, but having gotten to that final level, and you're right, they, they put pressure on themselves. They put a target on themselves. They, they knew that they were ranked fourth in the country in preseason. And some of those losses were, you know, it's hard to say a loss is a good loss, but you can learn a lot from a loss. You know, a lot of those were quality losses in terms of lessons learned and how they've responded. So, yes, I would say this is the most seasoned Duke team we've seen in quite some time headed into postseason play. And we'll see how things shake out for the Blue Devils. Final minute here at Koskinen Stadium. See where Duke is seated in the ACC tournament, and then the NCAA coming in a couple of weeks. There's a late foul on Virginia Tech, and Duke wants to push quickly here. What goal differential? <laughs> Ramirez. A takeaway here by Virginia Tech. And a foul on Ramirez. Half a minute remaining. What was a really nip and tuck first half, 1-1 game, believe it or not, at the break, and then Duke turned it on in the final 45 minutes. Well, we talked about those halftime adjustments and, and what a dangerous closing team this team has been all year in the second half. They do it once again. Six second half goals for the Blue Devils, and Duke will make a statement as they head into postseason play. Duke finishes an unbeaten home regular season. 21 straight matches at Koskinen Stadium without a defeat. It's a 7-1 senior night win for the Duke Blue Devils. Hey, what a way to send these seniors out. 
Some of the rookies stepped up. A lot of underclassmen, a lot of things still to come for this Blue Devil team. But what a great night in Koskinen. We'll find out where the Blue Devils are seated in the ACC tournament probably tomorrow. And then we'll see where these teams go from a postseason perspective. Virginia Tech trying to win the ACC tournament to get in to the big dance. The Blue Devils score six times in the second half. It was a dominant second half for the Blue Devils as they win their 21st straight without a loss here at Koskinen Stadium. For Cedric Burke, for our producer Caleb Waters, and the rest of our tremendous team, I'm Chris Edwards saying good night from Koskinen Stadium in Durham for the eighth ranked Blue Devils. Hold serve at home. They win it 7-1. Good night from Durham where the Blue Devils win.